All right, in the last video, we determined that a definite integral and a derivative were essentially inverses and they'll cancel each other out. <clears throat> so that leads us right into the second fundamental theorem of calculus. And that's right, there's two of them. Uh, so if the function f is continuous on an open interval i containing a, then for every x in the interval, the derivative of the integral from a to x of f of t dt is going to equal f of x. And that is the fundamental theorem of calculus. So basically, you have a derivative of a definite integral, and you get right back to the function. But if you notice, the variable has been switched from t to whatever variable of the upper bound is into that x. So it makes these pretty simple. I mean, it looks like it's going to be super complicated, but it really isn't. So we're going to use the theorem to find the derivative of each of these. So just do exactly as the theorem says. It says, hey, take your original function, replace the variable with that upper bound. So we're going to take the t and replace it with x, and hey, we get x to the fifth. Ta-da! All right, part B. Um, uh oh, it's a little bit more complex of a function, but have no fear, we can use that theorem. So e to the x times sine of x. And that's really fortunate because we don't know how to integrate this guy out just yet. You'll see that in calculus too. And same thing for this one. We have no way to integrate this. It doesn't fit any formula, but thankfully we have that theorem to help us out. So ln of x squared plus 9x plus e to the x. And there we go. But let's look at this one. So at first it wants us to find the derivative without using the theorem. So that means we've got to do it the old fashioned way. We've got to integrate, plug in the bounds. Then we can get the derivative. So let's just see what happens. So we're going to integrate 3t squared. So t to the third. Going from 0 to x to the third. So plug in your bounds. So x to the third to the third minus 0 to the third which gives us x to the ninth. And that is still our capital F of x. So we're looking for its derivative, which would be 9x to the eighth. Huh. So we got something totally different than if we would have just used that second fundamental theorem of calculus. Because if we follow the same process, we would have plugged in the bound. And for t, and we would have come up with a completely different answer. These two things don't match up. So why not? <clears throat> well, for two reasons. One, the upper bound wasn't x. It was x to the third. So you can't just, you know, just, just take the variable itself and plug it in for t. You gotta take the entire upper bound and stick it in there. Um, so does that mean you can't, because we got something totally different, does that mean you can't use the theorem? Well, you still can. However, remember that you're taking the derivative 
And you have to make sure you're taking the derivative of everything that's in there. You have to account for everything. So in that sense, you also have to use the chain rule. So it adds a little dimension to when we use that second fundamental theorem of calculus. So we can still essentially use it, uh, we just have to be a little bit careful. So you're still going to take that upper bound and plug it in for your variable. So in this case we'll get ln of 4x squared. But you have to take the derivative of your bound because it's no longer just an x, now it's a 4x. So now you gotta multiply by the derivative of that bound. And we end up with 4ln of 16x squared. And same thing over here, anytime that bound is not just x, if it's something else, you gotta multiply by its derivative. So plug in the bound, and then multiply by the derivative of the bound. So sine to the third times cosine of x and it worked I mean it would have worked um, in those earlier questions when we use the theorem uh, so like on part a you plugged in x and for the t and got x to the fifth well if you multiply by that upper bound it's just one and so you ended up with x to the fifth so you were really using the chain rule all along you just didn't see it all right let's look at this last example uh, so the graph consists of three line segments. Uh, so let g be the function defined by uh, the integral from 0 to x of f of t dt. So estimate g of 0, g of 4, and g of 8. Well, when you evaluate uh, a function, you know, what do you do with the number that's in the parentheses? you got to plug it in for x no matter where the x is. So if the x is the upper bound, well, then that's where you gotta plug it in. So zero to zero of f of t d t. Well, that one's easy. The bounds match, so that's just zero. All right, next one, g of four. So now you're gonna go from zero to four, but we're gonna use the graph to do it. So we need to get the area that's in this triangle, but because it's below the x-axis, it'll be negative. So one half times the base times the height, get negative eight. All right, g of eight, integrate from zero to eight of our function. So we need to take the area of this, what we just found, so the negative eight, and then add in the area of this triangle that was above the x-axis. So base is four, height is also four, and negative eight plus eight, most of the time comes out as zero. All right, not too bad. B, find the largest interval on which G is increasing. Okay, so we know that we, if you want to figure out where G increases or where it decreases, you gotta go off the derivative. So we have G prime of X is equal to, what the heck, we gotta do the derivative of that? Oh my gosh. How on earth are we gonna figure that out? Hmm, wait a minute, that kinda looks a little uh, familiar, right? Didn't we just kinda use that to figure out what that was? Yeah, we did. 
that was the derivative of that thing right here. That was that second fundamental theorem. Well, we get to use it even though I didn't tell you to. <clears throat> so if you did the derivative of this, that's just going to be uh, f of x. Just plug the x in for the t. So the derivative of g is f. So with this graph right here, that's really the graph of the derivative of g. So if I want where g is increasing, I want where its derivative is positive. So it's positive up here. So it's positive from 4 to 8. So C, it's the reverse. Where is it decreasing? Well, now I want where the derivative, or in this case, the F is negative, or below the x-axis, and that would be this region in here. So from zero to four. And then D, identify any extrema of G. Well, that's when the derivative switches in sign. So we have one at the four, and it's a relative min. Since the derivative or f switches from negative to positive. So that second fundamental theorem of calculus uh, is really nice to use uh, anytime they want the derivative of an, of a definite integral. You can always use it. Okay, so that is it for uh, this section. Um, so try the homework, email me uh, with any questions, uh, contact me during office hours. Um, yeah, so good luck and talk to you next time.